welcome. So let's imagine then that this carburetor is fixed to a machine and we've just primed it up and we're going to try and start the machine. And let's now imagine that the operator has pulled the starter pull cord and so the engine started turning over. It's now cranking. So the engine's now fired up and there's a constant supply of air going into the engine now. One thing I need to mention at this stage is that although fuel has been drawn out of this area, of the metering area here and up through the main jet and out into the Venturi and it's the air that's rushing past the end of the jet that draws it out. It isn't the only pressure that helps that fuel come out the main jet. It actually gets some help and we get that from this diaphragm here. This is the fuel pump diaphragm. The diaphragm spans right across the width of the carburetor but the fuel pump part of the diaphragm is this area here. Now this is a specific area of the diaphragm that's compartmentalized by the special gasket above and it moves up and down like a pumping action. Of course in a real life situation it would move up and down much faster than this. In fact it moves as fast as the piston moves up and down inside the engine and I'll explain how that comes about shortly. But each time that fuel pump diaphragm lowers it pushes out fuel out of that fuel pump reservoir into this area here into this fuel vein and then it continues along and helps push that valve flap off its seat that one-way valve flap and then it enters this upper chamber here and then is forced down past the needle valve because at this stage the needle valves open because of that vacuum drawing out into the venturi and now it's a double whammy effect we've got air rushing through the venturi sucking that fuel out of the main jet and we've got the pump there creating pressure inside the metering area there allowing the fuel to go upwards in towards the Venturi much quicker and better. And the obvious result of all this is that the engine's running much better and much smoother because it's got a great supply of fuel there. And the way the fuel pump actually pumps and gets its power to pump is a lot to do with this area here. This is a special hole on the side of the carburetor and it has a special airway there that extends inside the carb to the top of the fuel pump diaphragm. And if we just put that into perspective, it's this hole here I'm referring to. And just to explain how all of this works, we'll come back to the diagram. And if we could imagine now that this carburetor is fixed to a machine, so it's bolted to a machine, that hole there would be connected to the engine by a special airway or a pipe. And let's take a basic look how. So we've got the carburetor here and let's imagine we've got an engine here, of course, they're not to scale, I'm just making a point. And we've got the connection there, as we can see at the bottom of the engine, we've got that connection of that pipe there to that little hole. And in reality, the carburetor would be fitted to the side of the engine, of course, but we've got a direct contact now from that hole to the bottom here, underneath the piston. And of course, we've got the crankshaft here. And when that turns and the piston lowers, we can see there that the piston traveling downwards is forcing pressure through that pipe and into that hole in the carburetor. So that pressure is coming up to the carburetor through this line here, what we've just seen, and it's going inside the hole and then it's going down into its special airway inside the carburetor and it ends up here on top of the diaphragm. And this area of the diaphragm is specially compartmentalized. As we said before, it's that special gasket above that compartmentalizes all of the air to the top of this diaphragm which forces it downwards. Okay so that's the state of the diaphragm when the piston has lowered creating a pushing action above it but now the piston rises and we can see there's a different direction and flow because as the piston rose it created a vacuum behind it and that caused a drawing out action so it's like a sucking action. And of course, that vacuum has felt all the way down this pipe and through this hole. And of course, that will have an effect inside the carb because now all the air that was on top of the diaphragm now wants to come out under the piston. So what's happening now? Now that air is leaving the top of the diaphragm, it actually draws the diaphragm up because it's that vacuum effect. So it draws that diaphragm upwards as the piston rises. Then of course the piston lowers and creates a pressure inwards and pushes the diaphragm down and then it rises again and draws out there creating a vacuum lifting the diaphragm again and that's the continual cycle. That's why I mentioned earlier that the diaphragm travels at the same speed as the piston travels up and down.
But this air being drawn in and out of this airline here shouldn't be confused with the air going in through the inlet, the two separate systems. So just a quick recap, we've got air from the piston creating a pressure and a vacuum on this diaphragm here, making it pump up and down quite efficiently, and it's pushing fuel this way under the one-way valve flap, and it's going down past the needle valve into the metering area, then it's going up through the main jet because now we've got extra vacuum there because of the drawing in of the air above it, and it's sucking it all out there into the venturi, the pressurised fuel from the fuel pump reservoir, when the fuel pump's pumping by the way, can only go down this fuel line and up through this valve flap and down into the needle valve, rather than take this fuel vein, which is the inlet, which would actually go against the inlet flow. And the reason it doesn't go down this line here is because when the fuel pump lowers, it does create a pressure in this line back here and into this chamber, and it creates it right back to this valve flap here. This is the one-way valve flap. And this valve flap, when there's pressure above here, is pushed down fast on its seat, so no pressure can go below it, and it can't travel down the inlet. So it can't travel this way, it can only travel this way. And so far I've only explained how this pump pushes out fuel for the metering area in order to be used in the engine. I haven't actually shown yet how it draws fuel in and of course it has to draw fuel in in order for it to push fuel out because that's the working of a pump to create flow. So I haven't actually shown how it's creating flow yet from the tank through the system and then return to the tank. So let me just explain. So as the fuel pump diaphragm raises and lowers then, as it lowers it creates a positive flow pressure for the fuel underneath it and as it rises it creates a vacuum for the fuel so it sucks fuel in. So just for illustration purposes, let's imagine that the diaphragm is just in its downward position. So we've got a snapshot there of it in its downward position because the air pressure is pushing down on the back of it, on the top of it, pushing it down. And then obviously we've got movement in the piston. So the piston goes up and it pulls the diaphragm up. As it's pulled that diaphragm up, it's going to want to draw in fuel into that area because it's just expelled fuel out. So it's going to want to draw more in. And it can draw from these two lines here but we only want it to draw from one of them. This line here is the outlet line, so we don't want it to draw back through there. Because if we drew from there, the engine wouldn't run because it would be constantly drawing back on that fuel that should be going down to the metering area. But the clever thing about this fuel line is, is that when the diaphragm draws in from this line and tries to draw in the fuel, it actually has an effect here on the one-way valve. The vacuum there, going inward towards the diaphragm, pulls that one-way valve onto its seat tightly, so that no fuel can now escape from this line back into this reservoir. OK, so the diaphragm goes back up again, and we can't draw from this line, we've already established that, so we draw down here from this line. And of course, when we do so, the vacuum pressure is felt all the way up here into this chamber, and because we've got vacuum up here, it lifts this valve flap off its seat. It lifts it up. And of course, now that valve is off its seat, the fuel from below can now travel upwards past it. And that vacuum can be felt all the way down these fuel lines here and up into this chamber. And it passes that metal strainer filter there, which is doing its part in helping to clear the fuel of debris. And we can see from here that there is a direct inlet from the fuel tank through the system and into the fuel pump reservoir, all as a result of that diaphragm lifting upwards, creating that vacuum. OK, so the pistons come back down now, and that will have lowered the diaphragm. So let's have a better look at the fuel flow when the diaphragm's in its low position. OK, so that air pressure above has pushed the diaphragm down. And when it came down, it forced that fuel outwards through this point here. And we can see by the direction of the arrows, the way it's taken. So first of all, importantly, it tried to take this route, but it couldn't go any further than this point here. It went to this chamber and then it forced the valve flap onto its seat and couldn't go any further. So indeed, it went the correct way. It came down the outlet fuel vein here. It lifted this valve flap off its seat and then travelled past it. And then it went to the needle valve because the needle valve was open. It travelled down the needle valve. It entered the metering area. And then it went up through the main jet travelled right the way up and out to the Venturi. I'm just trying to simplify this system. It probably wouldn't pump 
just on one single downward movement of the pump from the pump all the way around the system and up to the Venturi. It'll probably take a few pumps, but I'm just trying to simplify the drawing this way. OK, so let's have a look from this perspective when the diaphragm's gone back up. So there it is. The diaphragm's gone back up because the air above it has created a vacuum drawing it up. And that's, of course, drawn fuel in underneath the diaphragm. And we can clearly see the path now from the fuel tank going all the way through the system and down into the reservoir of the fuel pump. So as I've said, the diaphragm would travel up and down much faster than this, but this is something like what it would look like with the fuel flow. 